Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. It's Josh. Um, okay, so this is probably going to be my last video before, uh, you know, the holiday season and the new year. So right off the bat, I just wanted to say a big, big heartfelt thank you to all of you who are here watching, you know, have who have been here watching all of my videos. Um, it really, you guys, means so much to me that you all are here, that you come back every time I upload a new video. Um, I just, it, it really is kind of what makes me want to continue doing these videos um, because the, the, the comments and the, the questions and the messages over on Instagram and everything like that, um, you know, it, it really does mean the world to me. So thank you guys so much for another wonderful year. I look forward to another year, another great year in 2020 uh, with more watch videos. Um, I've got a long wish list, so maybe some of those will come to fruition in 2020, so, and you'll be the first to know about it. Anyway, so today's video is going to be an update on how I have been liking my Seiko Cocktail Time Mockingbird. Um, for those of you who watch my channel, you guys know that I generally don't do kind of like, um, you know, updated, you know, how have things been wearing for me type videos until I've had a piece for, you know, at least six months. Because I feel like that's really when you start to get a better sense of how something is going to work for you. Um, however, in this case, I think, you know, partly because of this watch, partly because of the season that we are, you know, quite heavily into now, I've gotten so many questions, um, you know, on my original video here on YouTube, over on Instagram, um, just all about how this watch has been wearing for me. So, and I've been answering them like, you know, as, as much as, as much and as thoroughly as I can, but I kind of felt like, you know, there were so many people who had so many questions that I figured it, maybe it was just better to do another video um, because I have been wearing this on pretty heavy rotation as we've gotten, you know, into fall and winter. And that was really what uh, I think I bought this back in August. That was what I wanted this watch for. So I do feel like I've had enough wrist time to kind of give you guys at least an update on how this has been working for me um, because there are a lot of you out there I know who have been looking at picking up this particular watch. So let's just dive into that. I've got a couple things that I want to touch on. Um, and I've gotten a lot of like, you know, kind of like the same questions from people. So as I go through that, I think it'll help to answer some of the questions that I've gotten. So uh, let's just dive in. Okay, now right off the bat, one thing I want to touch on uh, from my original video, if you watched my original video, is you can tell I have changed out the bracelet here. Um, the first one, in, you know, when I first got the watch, I ordered a, I always, you know, order a Shinola leather bracelet to put on all of my... Um, you know, the watches that I think go well on a leather strap. It's always a Shinola. And the first one I ordered was beautiful. It was this beautiful, very dark kind of ebony brown um, color. Uh, and it was, you know, it worked really well on the watch. However, as I was starting to wear it in, I actually found that it was a little bit too dark. And so what I found was that, you know, with that really dark brown strap, again, absolutely beautiful and would have complemented a lot of other watches I have. Um, I found that on this particular case, on this particular dial, it didn't, it, you just kind of had like this dark face and then a dark bracelet. So what I did again is I, um, <laughs> let me push my light out. Um, I got this kind of, you know, lighter brown strap so that even when this is starting to look kind of black, we've still got a nice pop of color for fall in the strap. And you can see that here. Um, but anyway, I thought that, again, you know, the lighter strap really, really, again, this pops in the light, this pops in the light. I really like how warm this strap is. The red one I had, or the reddish brown one I had, again, was very, it was very warm, but it also had a lot of, like, again, that kind of reddish brown hue. This one has a really kind of yellowy, yellowy honey-ish kind of hue to it, and I think that really, really complements, again, the green face, this gold second hand we have, um... I don't know, overall, I love this combination. And this is what's really been working well for me as we've gone into the season. Um, the other thing I like about the strap, and I know I've been rambling about the strap for how many minutes now, but the other thing I really like about it is that we've got, again, that white contrast stitching. Um, the original strap I had had kind of matching dark, you know, dark brown stitching, and it was fine. It looked really, really nice, but the thing about it is I think that, you know, as you're wearing this as a dressy kind of watch, the white stitching really adds kind of a level of you know, kind of bespoke, you know, tailored, stitched, hand-stitched luxury quality to the watch that really, again, complements also kind of our, our silver casing here, the white presage mark on the dial. Overall, I think with this strap, it's a really cohesive package now. So really, really enjoy this. I highly recommend, I mean, Shinola leather, I know, is expensive. It's about $100 for this particular strap, but 
again, Shinola leather is some of the best out there. I, um, I've had some of their straps now for probably five years, and they just patina, and they wear, and they just... They get better with age. They truly, truly do. And so I think $100 for a strap that you can use again for five to 10 years is not that big a deal, or it's not that bad a value, maybe. So there's been a lot of discussion on the original video in the comments about how this guy looks in kind of like your average light. Um, and maybe it was, it's probably my fault for not getting it across in the original video, but I kind of knew going into the purchase that it wasn't going to be this, you know, bright, splashy, vibrant green all the time. Um, and a lot of people who had commented were right that most of the time this is a very dark, very understated, very subtle kind of watch. And then the magic of it is that when you are in, you know, sunlight, under fluorescent light, under, you know, like kind of nice bright light at home or whatever then you get this beautiful splash and pop of green um so i took some videos that are playing here that really show you i think what this guy looks like under different lighting conditions and for me though that honestly is what makes this watch so special i don't think i think it would look kind of cheap if it always looked that green because you know, this is the the magical thing about it is when you turn your wrist at just the right angle and you get that pop of green, it just catches your eye, it catches other people's eyes, and it doesn't, it's just, it's a really, it adds a layer of dimension, I think, to the watch that um, really, again, makes it quite special. So anyway, I apologize if I misled anybody to think that, you know, the face is always going to be this, you know, vibrant, shiny, splashy green. It's really not, but I think that that... I would rather, I would much rather have it the way it is than if it were a really shiny, splashy green. So anyway, just wanted to cover that in this video as well. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about with this guy is what I tend to pair this with. So um, you guys know I like to do kind of like watch combinations, so I never just wear my watch on my wrist, although I am today. <laughs> um, even in the winter, you know, fall and winter when you're wearing like a long sleeve shirt, I think, you know, if you're inside and you're working or whatever, and you roll your sleeves up and you've got something there kind of paired with your watch that just kind of matches it and it just adds again a level of luxury or kind of bespoke it just looks like you considered your ensemble a little bit more so this is a beautiful Salvatore Ferragamo kind of leather braided braided leather cuff um, it just kind of like you know it's a push button closure here it just you know opens like this and uh, snaps back in I wear this year round. I wear it with, you know, kind of like some of my lighter watches in the summer, and I've been pairing it with this guy in the fall, and together on the wrist, I think this is just an amazing combination. The other thing that has been really interesting for me is I have a very hard time wearing gold jewelry. Um, you know, again, if it's bracelets, if it's watches, if it's whatever. Um, I have a gold wedding band here, um, and even though our case here is silver, I actually find that this gold, that this watch pairs really well, again, this watch combination with the strap, um, pairs really well with gold jewelry. So if you have something like a gold bracelet or, you know, like a gold ring or whatever it might be, this is a watch that is going to pair really, really well with gold. I think that's really, really beautiful. Um, the other thing that I like about this watch is that it pairs really well with brown, like, kind of, like, small leather goods and accessories. So, this is not, like, a small leather good, this is a, you know, my Ray-Ban sunglasses case, but imagine if you had, like, a brown wallet or something like that, and you paired this guy with that. Um, again, adding those pops of color, even in winter when things tend to be very drab, I think makes a big, big statement, makes it look really, makes you look really considered, like, again, you put a lot of thought into your ensemble. Um... I've got, I've got like just, you know, way a ton of different sunglasses, but one thing that I really like is our Ray-Bans um, kind of classic aviator. This is the classic, I think this is a smaller one. This is like 50, 58 or something like that. Um, I don't know if you can tell here, but we've got a brown gradient lens, and I really like these, again, during the winter when the sun isn't, you know, like blinding like it is during the summer. These are a little bit lighter, so as you're driving, as you're, you know, walking around the shopping center or whatever, um, these are a little bit lighter, again, to kind of offset how drab and how dark we tend to dress for winter. And again, same thing, the brown in here really, really just contrasts nicely with the, or not contrast, but complements the, um, you know, like brown sunglasses. These have a gold frame. Again, I'm not huge on the gold frame, again, because I feel like I don't wear that much gold. So, um, 
I kind of have a hard time wearing these during the summer when everything is cooler, when everything is, you know, more silver or whatever. Um, but during the winter, I've paired these. I've been, like, pretty much exclusively wearing this watch and these sunglasses. And I think this works really, really well uh, for fall and winter. Okay, so let me put this guy down. And then the other thing I wanted to show you guys also is some of the clothing options that I pair with it, because that's another thing I've gotten tons of questions about. So I think I showed this in my original video. This is a like your classic kind of Burberry scarf. It's that kind of, um, I don't know, they've got a term for this kind of colorway. It's like the classic Burberry tartan colors. But again, the same thing. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, the green. The green is so surprising to me how well it offsets even with things that are red and that are kind of like, again, that reddish kind of warm versus like a yellowy kind of warm. Um, and again, same thing. We've got, you know, kind of like this beautiful honey color here. We've got a beautiful kind of like honey color here. We've got the white stitching. We've got white accents or lighter accents here. So all in all, really, really love the combination of this watch. The green face, the silver indices, the gold second tan, the honey bracelet. Uh, let me show you one of my favorite shirts for this time of year. Um, this is a kind of like green and red plaid. I love how kind of Christmassy this is. And again, same thing. So here we lose that kind of, you know, like, like the really honey color, kind of honey, <laughs> honey kind of colors in the garment, but we still have, again, matching green, matching green. We've got this beautiful now, the kind of honey brown here really, again, does contrast, in fact, this uh, material. But then again, we kind of match it up with the white stitching here on the uh, strap and, you know, kind of like the white accents in the shirt. You know, if you pair like all three of these together here, like, it's so pretty. It is just so, it works so well. This is just like the ultimate kind of holiday combo. Um, then the last kind of garment I've got here is this sweater that I bought this year. Um, I thought it was really, really nice. It's kind of like this dark chocolate brown, but then it's got kind of like this herringbone-ish kind of like chevron texture to it. Um, I've been putting this over all kinds of different shirts. And again, same thing. Look at that, how well that pairs with this sweater. Um, really, really gorgeous. I think, again, here we're losing out on that white, but the kind of like honey brown here matches this kind of like lighter brown on the sweater. And so that looks really, really phenomenal when paired. Again, if I roll the sleeves up of this um, and then I have this showing and I accent it with, you know, my bracelet or something like that. I, I don't know. It just it's such a it's such a nice, really, really warm, really, really kind of fall and winter. It just it just brings some light and warmth and color to winter. And so I really like that. Um, then I promise I'm almost done. The last thing I've got here, I brought a pair of my shoes. I have had these shoes now for like four or five years. They are Magnani's. I love them. Magnani is one of my favorite shoe brands because their leather is just, I mean, it will not die. You can clean these, you can do whatever. Um, I, so whilst I love, you know, doing brown and doing, you know, tans and all that kind of thing during holiday and fall and winter, I actually think that you can overload it a bit. So if you've got like, Again, if you're wearing, you know, brown pants, a brown sweater, a brown watch, you know, whatever, you really just want to, again, contrast, you know, strategically add pops of color to your ensemble. And so one of the things that I've been doing with this watch is, again, if I'm wearing something like, you know, this sweater and my Burberry scarf or whatever, it's a little bit too much brown because even though you're adding that color, there's no contrast anymore. So... What I've been doing is I've been doing kind of like black pants or, you know, really dark pants. I've actually got a pair of like really nice uh, dark green pants that I wear during winter that I should have brought out. Um, I will contrast all of that with these beautiful red sneakers. And even then, even with this, this, you know, my watch looks phenomenal. Um, it just, this watch goes with everything. I said this in the original video, but this watch goes with everything I wear during the fall. Um, and because I didn't pay a ton of money for it, um, I don't feel like it is, I don't feel like I'm not getting my money's worth if I only wear it for, you know, six months out of the year. Um, depending on where you live, you know, this is a piece that can take you all the way from like, let's say September all the way through March. Because of the price point, I think that this is just a, a phenomenal value. Um, I, I don't remember off the top of my head how much I paid for it. I'll put that here in the video as well. If you guys want to know the story of how I buy all of my Seiko watches, it's not a secret or anything like that, but um, go and watch the original video I did on this guy because I kind of went into in detail of 
you know, how I buy my Seikos, why, you know, where I buy them from. I always buy them from Macy's and why I choose to do that. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching another video. Um, this ended up going long, just like <laughs> all my other videos do. I think you guys expect nothing less from me at this point, though. So anyway, with that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in 2020. I hope you have a wonderful, warm holiday season and a bright and prosperous new year. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.